It was about this time last summer when we featured our patio garden on the program. We told you about how we prepared the site, came up with the design, and then installed these wonderful terracotta colored hearthstone pavers that were given to us by Alpha Concrete Products in Oklahoma City. The garden has turned out very well. We've been very pleased with it. And a lot of visitors that have come to the garden have also expressed a lot of interest in this area. These pavers are a good example of what we call hardscape, the non-plant, non-soil part of the garden. Not only do they give us a nice surface to walk on, a quaint little sitting and outdoor activity area, but they're also attractive. We get a really good contrast between the hard, strong texture of the pavers and then the delicate, soft texture of the plants in this garden. It just kind of makes the plants show up a little better out here in the garden. Well, this is an idea that you might think about employing at your own home. Maybe if you live in an urban area and you have a side yard or a small backyard and you're tired of maintaining the lawn areas or the turf in those small areas, you could do something like this and just have an area completely made up of planting spots and hardscape. Well, we've made a few changes in our patio garden from last year to this year, and I just want to show you some of the things we've done. Each little planting section in our patio garden has sort of its own little mini theme this year. For instance, this little corner of the garden is what we call our dry area or our, our xeriscape part of the patio garden. We've got plants in this little section that don't take as much water as the other plants that we have in here. We've got things like the uh, hummingbird mint or the agastache, this kind of apricot color right here. We've got the Russian sage, wonderful tough perennial. We've got some uh, annuals right here. This is angelonia, a snapdragon relative from Mexico that really loves the heat, blooms all summer. Right back here, we've got a plant that we really like here at our studio garden. This is the autumn sage, or salvia gregii. This particular one is called pink preference. Wonderful little shrubby salvia. In the lower part of the garden over here, we've got some, some lavenders. You can see some of the lavender colored flowers on those plants and those kind of silvery gray color to the foliage. We also might notice that the mulch that we've got in this garden is a little bit different. It's kind of a, a gravel or a grit type of mulch. And we use this in this dry garden because it keeps the plants clean. It keeps the soil from splashing up on the plants. And it also keeps any decaying organic matter from coming in contact with the stems of these plants. This is also the type of mulch that we have around the plants in our rock garden. Right here is another favorite plant that everybody that comes to our garden really seems to enjoy. This is the Pink Crystals Ruby Grass. You get this beautiful silvery bluish tint to the foliage and then these almost cotton candy-like flowering inflorescences up here at the top that are really nice and soft. Well, another interesting area within the patio garden is the soft foliage uh, portion of the garden. That's what we call this little area. And it doesn't really have any flowers except for the flowers of some of the grasses. But everything in here is to kind of give you the impression of just uh, a, a soft uh, foliage type uh, of texture. Uh, kind of makes you want to just kind of reach out and kind of touch or feel of these plants. Right here we've got a, a grass that we grew from seed. It was very easy. This is the non-purple form of the fountain grass. Everybody's probably familiar with the purple fountain grass that we plant a lot here in Oklahoma. This is the same thing, but it doesn't have the purple color in the leaves and stems. You do get a kind of a, a, a hint of pink up here in these plumes, but a very uh, soft uh, color for the garden. We've also got different uh, silvers and greens and uh, uh, this bronze from the bronze fennel making up this little part of the garden. This short grass right here is called ponytail grass, also called Mexican hair grass, Stipa tenuissima, and it kind of looks like blonde hair a little bit, almost like you could just kind of part that over and maybe brush it one way or the other. 
Right down here, we've got a plant that you might not think of using as an ornamental in your garden. And this is parsley. This is one that has very crisp leaves or very crinkly, curly leaves. And you might see these little caterpillars feeding on some of the leaves here. We're not gonna try to spray those or get rid of them in any way because those are the larvae of the black swallowtail butterfly. So we don't mind them eating a little bit of our parsley if we can watch those metamorphosize and turn into beautiful butterflies. Sometime if you tap these on the head, they'll display their little orange horns. They kind of like a little defense mechanism. Wonderful little uh, show of, of leave me alone in the garden, I don't want to be bothered. This portion of our patio garden is made up of a color theme. We've got plants with yellow, white, and pink or purple flowers in this part of the garden. The yellow down here is the moon, moonbeam coreopsis, a former perennial plant of the year several years ago. And we've got the perennial plant of the year for 2002 right here. This is a phlox called David, very good white disease resistant phlox. The pink vine growing on the support back here is of course the Alice DuPont Mandevilla, wonderful tropical vine, provides a nice display in the summertime. Right here we've got one of my favorite butterfly bushes. This is the one called Pink Delight. I think it's one of the, uh, the best uh, specimens for our Oklahoma gardens. Wonderful huge panicles of pink flowers. Butterflies really love this shrub. Right down here we've got our Oklahoma Proven Perennial of the Year for this year. The Magnus Purple Cone Flower. Got those beautiful pinkish purple ray florts and the little orangish color of the flowers that make up this cone or the central disc. Right next to it, we've got a, a close relative. This is the white swan cone flower, sort of the white version of the purple cone flower. We've got a few silver foliage plants in here with our Poes Castle Artemisia. And then right here, we've got a plant that we're trying for the first time this year here at our studio gardens. This is an annual tobacco. This is Nicotiana mutabilis. And it makes a nice tall specimen, very airy, you can kind of see through the plant. And the flowers tend to fade from pink to, to a lighter color and then finally to white. So you get just a multitude of colors suspended above your other garden plants within this garden. Right over here, we've got a section of our patio garden that we call our hot colors. We've got some bright reds, yellows, pinks, and purple. This, of course, is the purple fountain grass. We showed you earlier the non-purple version. This one, of course, is sterile, doesn't produce seeds. The other one you can grow from seeds, but also a wonderful plant, nice dark grass for the garden. And I just really love these four colors in combination in the garden. The purple fountain grass, we've got the other purple foliage plant, the purple heart, and then one of my favorite sun coleuses, this one's called Alabama Sunset. I just love that yellow and pinkish color that you get in the foliage of this coleus. And then to top it all off, we've got the red from one of our wax leaf begonias. This is from the cocktail series of wax leaf begonias. This one's called vodka. But we get red flowers and also a, a red tint to the foliage. So hard to go wrong when you mix these four plants together. Well, this little corner of our patio garden we reserved for sort of some tall plants. We've got the uh, Carl Forster feather reed grass, some sort of pastel colors, and then these tall amaranth that we showed you a few weeks ago on our program. We've got a nice Russian sage that's been here in its uh, second year providing a really good display in this part of the garden. And then our tube roses. We planted these earlier this spring in near our patio garden, near our sitting area, because mm, they have just a, a wonderful fragrance. Very fragrant flower, makes an excellent cut flower. We explained how these were used in the uh, ceremonies and rituals of the, the Aztecs in their ancient civilization. But uh, planted, uh, we grew from some tubers that we planted earlier this spring. Well, the final quadrant of our patio garden this year is made up of plants with blue and yellow flowers. Again, we've got the moonbeam coreopsis, 
We've got one of our, our favorite bedding plants here. This is the Victoria Mealy Cup Sage. Wonderful plant, sometimes overwinters as a perennial, but we usually grow it as an annual. We've got a, another silver Poes Castle Artemisia in this garden. And then just another uh, group of, of blue and yellow plants. And this one we grew from seed. This is the Indian Summer Rubecchia. It's also a perennial, but actually best grown as an annual. Seems to perform better just uh, sowing the seed fresh every year, enjoying it as an annual bedding plant in that way. Also in this part of the garden, we have golden moneywort, ageratum, and this yellow sun gallardia. You can only get the seed of this plant from Park Seed Company. And it's a wonderful all yellow gallardia with sort of double flowers. Well, another plant that we grew from seed in this blue and yellow quadrant of our patio garden is the tropical milkweed, Asclepius curasavica. And this is one called silky gold. It's a yellow form. The normal color of this plant is sort of a red orange color. Now these aren't winter hardy in Oklahoma, so we just grow them as a tender bedding plant. But in the plant's native homes of Central and South America, they actually turn out to be sort of shrubby perennials. Well, the tropical milkweed is in the family Asclepidaceae, and we have several members of this family native to Oklahoma, including our orange butterfly weed. The orange butterfly weed is native to much of Oklahoma, and it's a plant that we saw growing out in Jerry Snap's garden in Boy City out in the Panhandle. So that right there lets us know that it's a very tough plant and a good perennial for most of Oklahoma. The reason it's called butterfly weed and the reason we have it in our butterfly garden is because it is a good food source for butterflies. A lot of adult butterfly species lap up the nectar from the flowers and the caterpillars or the larvae of the monarch butterfly eat the foliage. Well, both the tropical milkweed and the butterfly weed will occasionally have aphids feeding on the growing points, but in all my years of gardening, I've never really noticed that it's that big of a problem. The plants se seem to withstand the aphids feeding on them pretty well. Well, the reason a lot of the plants in the Asclepidaceae are called milkweeds is because they contain a white milky sap. And you can see here, if I tear this leaf, some of the white sap just kind of oozes out from the veins, or at least you can see there on the, the end of the, the broken leaf. Now, some people are uh, a little bit allergic to this. It'll cause dermatitis in people that are particularly sensitive, and that's because it is a little bit toxic. But those toxins are actually beneficial to the monarch butterfly larvae. When they feed on these leaves, they ingest those toxins, and it makes their bodies a little bit poisonous. So they taste bad whenever birds or other predators want to eat them. So it's a neat little system within nature to help protect the monarch butterfly. If you taste bad, things don't want to eat you. Well, I've got a few more interesting plants in the Asclepidaceae up on the deck of our studio barn. This plant is called the carrion flower. And the word carrion means dead things. And the reason it's called carrion flowers because the flowers smell like the rotting dead flesh of a, an animal. And the reason it smells like that is because it's pollinated by flies. The flies come in, crawl around on there, they get the pollen on them, and then they fly over to another flower and they help pollinate the plant and set the seed. So another interesting way that nature makes sure everything works out right. The carrion flower is native to South Africa the dry areas in that part of the world. It is a plant that's not winter hardy in Oklahoma, but you can't overwinter it indoors. But don't worry, it's not gonna bloom inside and make your house smell like something dead. But these wonderful, huge starfish shaped flowers make it well worth growing. I just love the intricate detail, the pattern inside the flower here, and these interesting little hairs on the flower as well. Well, another plant in the Asclepidaceae is this little blue flower right over here. This is a little climbing, twining type of plant from the South American countries of Brazil and Uruguay. And it's also a, a plant that contains the same milky sap, grows in dry, rocky parts of those countries. 
not winter hardy, but uh, makes another excellent container or uh, patio plant for us here in Oklahoma. Well, I just wanted to show you some of the interesting variation of the plants in the Asclepidaceae and just show you some of the international relatives of our own native Oklahoma butterfly weeds and milkweeds. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program. Hope to see you again next week.